wear a sweatshirt. The main cam. Yeah. Hey. Yeah, Clark. What up, fellas? We, uh... Oh. Nothing, I'll just... Oh. All right. That's a pretty shot. Hey, now I know I'd like to be up on it. Get up on it. Get Clark. up on get, it. Get. I'm going to just pull this Side. back like this because this is way better for me. It is too. As the host of this fucking show. Oh, I can't say that because I think people can hear me. Sorry about that for the profanity. Song. Yeah, the song's going. All right. That's what I'm going to do. Is check, it, check, check, check. My problem was I was turning to talk to you guys and my mic was way over here. I do, but I'm going to practice speaking into the mic. Samuel, what's going on? Well, Sam can't hear me. I can yell at her, but she's not going to hear me. She smiled at you. She did smile. Everybody smiles at me. (laughs) That would be pretty. Except for Mike when his technology is broken. He's going to rip a fucking ear. (laughs) I would be, too. Are we good Um, to go? I think in one minute and 55 seconds we're going to be good to go. And this should launch? Um, I'm going to launch it. Go to that's the right hand. So you like that. Since we and then we'll go to the left hand. I like the left hand. Ball it is beautiful. Yeah. You got it extra shiny thing. today. The main cam's got a little bit of softness to it. It's central. Yeah. And then, then you got that. Should I wear my sunglasses again? Stable sunglasses. That's right. That's. I feel like we have an audience. They're all uh, looking at us. But we need they to have tell, no... like, we should tell people somehow, like, this is why I was saying, like, we should have had... A monitor. We should have had a monitor where oh, people should... could listen in. We should, we should like, bring a, like, a card or a pamphlet or something to pass around and they can, we can give on the website. Yeah. That'd be a good idea. I agree. For sure, you could go around and tell us. See, everybody. I like kind of just sitting back like this. Right? We, I don't mean, that's fine to like, this have microphones remember. like this. I like sitting tall. This helps me remember. So, so people think right. I'm tall. We got T minus, what is it? 40 seconds? 40 seconds. Talk. We're talking about how we're trying all this new stuff. What I do in my spare time. Uh huh. Your preparation. You're, you're the guest, so I'm, I'm, I'm drinking beer. Here we go. Beer. Look at that. Beer brewery right up front. Cheers. Oh. Yeah. Cheers, Clark. Cheers. Hey, did you, are, hey your beer, check, Clark. Hey, can you grab my beer, please? Are we starting? Okay. It's just it's just showing that it's on. Go ahead. Okay. I just want to make sure you're good. Got it. All right, man. Brewery, I think yeah. we are. Uh, are we on? I have no idea. I think we are on. Are we? Yeah, we, I think we. Have we launched? Yeah, we've definitely launched. I think we launched before we even <laughs> knew we launched, but um, let's see here. I just want to make sure. Do we, that... have, do we have any viewers yet? No, let's see if we're live here. I just want to check this for everybody. Are we on? And, uh, well, hold on. on. Oh, I can't send it? links out to anybody. I'm going to set that there because that's the. So we're that's using the, my phone. That's the stream there. So I just want to make sure that we are good here. I don't know if you guys know this or not, but we are up to 181 subscribers, which is hey, pretty yeah. awesome. That is awesome. Yeah, it's we're really awesome. 100, when do we start getting paid See, for our awesomeness? <laughs> Add yeah, three right? zeros to that. I think this is a – hold on a minute, you guys, because – Eric, I don't know if you can do this. Hmm? I was just trying to put a thing out on Facebook because I think the link changed. Um, this is where we need audience participation on sharing our link. Rick might be able to tell us if he <clears> – <throat> can you hear us? You can? You can? can hear us. Okay, yeah, there we are. All right. There we go. Hey, right. beautiful people. I just people. wanted to make sure. So, hold on a minute. Yeah, we just need to – somebody needs to share this is what they need to do. But I'm going to do this as a hey. host, so why don't you and Clark talk about your love life? <laughs> yeah, it's like a self-serve huh? gas station over here. <laughs> right? I mean, I hope for, I mean, we may only have a couple of people out here right now. So, Well, all those fine people sitting at that table should be sharing 
and sharing, putting a link on my page and the LDR page. You got to talk to Cat. Yeah. And tell him to put it out there. Share the link, please, if you're watching, and post it onto the LDR website or the Facebook page. Would be awesome. Yeah. Since my phone is being used as an audio source, I am not able to do that. All right. Well, those next. of you that are out there listening, we are live at Beer Brewery the Carmel. Public so if you're around the area, beer. come hang out. What are you all, all right. drinking? What are you all drinking? I got a porter. The uh, porter is fine. I got, I got Wizard tenth, Tears. 10th Street. Wizard. Something. I got the Wizard Tears is what I got. Wizard Tears. So I'm going to leave that there because this is kind of our... It's a delay. It's a bad delay on it, but at least it gives us a little bit of, uh, it gives us a little bit of uh, understanding of where the F we're at. So, all right, well, let's kick this thing off, man. Uh, fellas, welcome to Beer Brewery here in Carmel, Indiana. I'm going to pop it back over here to the uh, main uh, stream. We're live streaming right now, yeah, so buddy. if uh, you're watching, we appreciate it. I don't know exactly how many. I think we got seven viewers, so hey, if you're out there, chat us a question, say hello, uh, check in with us. We're hanging out here at Beer Brewery in Carmel tonight, so doing a little Building a Refuge Mental Health Happy Hour. This is Eric to my left, and this is Clark to my right. Yeah. Hello, we, everybody. We are your crew here at Building Refuge. <laughs> right, Clark? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. This is uh, the main crew here. It's the main. It's, the main it's, it's a crew. We got our behind-the-scenes crew. It I mean, is definitely a crew. So Beer Brewery, just a little bit about these guys. I've known these guys for a while. Uh, Jerry and the family here at Beer Brewery are pretty awesome. I've actually even worked here. So my Wisconsin flag is... Hanging up over here. It was one of the first flags that actually was actually hung up here in this place. I don't think it matters because they lost in the tournament. Yeah, first round losers. <laughs> first round losers. But we uh, talked about that. they won the Big Ten, though. Jerry Connor tournament. and the entire family at Beer Brewery. Uh, definitely some great people. They have a location, the original location on 65th Street. Yes. Original beer location. This is the second location here in Carmel. And they just recently opened a new location up in Noblesville. So that's pretty awesome. And uh, I have not been there yet. Have you? Yeah, I was there on opening day. Oh, okay. That's the day the Badgers beat Purdue. Yeah. <laughs> it was a good day then. Well, yeah, it was a good day. It was a lot of fun. But, you know, for, for what it was, uh, it was kind of short-lived for us. But that's okay. It's all right. It's all right. They got a tight uh, Mike. Mike says we're sounding good. I don't know where Mike's at. I think he's outside ripping a heater because he we stressed him out in here. And he came through, didn't he? On uh, on what we were doing, but that's all good, man. So, yeah. Anyways, uh, Eric, as we normally do, there's Jerry Connor right there. We should get him over here and and say uh, hi to the say hi to the audience. He's a good dude. Um, Eric, as we normally do, tell everybody a little bit about building a refuge and what we do. Yeah, so Building a Refuge, we started back in 2018. Um, Brandon and I have shared stories with, you know, depression, suicide, anxiety, those types of things. Um, Clark came along, and we met him through a divine connection, I believe, and, and Clark uh, stepped in, and that's why we're on a podcast. But uh, our main goal is to bring hope to guys who are hurting. Uh, guys that are uh, going through whatever they're going through, may it, whether it's uh, divorce, uh, anxiety, depression, you know, suicidal ideation, whatever it may be. But uh, that's what we're here for. Uh, and we kind of bring a little bit of a, a lighter side to it, uh, if, if you can at times. Um, so that's why we are we find ourselves in pubs and Harley-Davidson dealerships and different things so that it's a little bit easier approach for guys who want to come, who maybe be might be a little intimidated by the conversation, yep. by the topic, um, but hopefully they can come, let their hair down a little bit, and just enjoy it, and uh, either come and talk about it or just come and hang. Yeah. So that's and, what we do. No, that's exactly right. And uh, Clark, you've been a big uh, influence, LDR Studios, and, and everything you've done for us, man. Tell, uh, it, you know, and again, you However much, this is the kind of cool part about building a refuge. Um, you know, organically, I think we've had some really great things come our way. And you're 
happen to be one of those. So I know I got those glasses on because if you start crying, <laughs> you I'm don't want anybody. Softy, man. I like... just figured that out. That's why he wears <laughs> That's it. That's why he does it. It's okay. I, I love I it. But, a lot. but if I love you it. would, like, just tell uh, our audience a little bit about yourself um, and what you do, not only personally in your personal life, but a, a little bit about LDR as well. Well, you know, uh, we all met um, because of an um, untimely death of my stepson <clears throat> and one of our good friends kind of led me to y'all. And then we had some common goals. Um, mine was to find a vehicle to kind of bring awareness um, because of the tragedy I had in my life. And then, I don't know, we met and three days later we're shooting a pilot and now we're doing <laughs> live know, streaming right? <laughs> stuff. Now, we're, now we took this thing on the road. Hey, we're up to 11 viewers, and, guys. Uh, Fantastic. For me, it's this is the fun part is setting the bar high and, Sometimes you struggle to get over it, but it, it seems like, hey, we we had some technology uh, issues today, but we got over them and we're streaming now. Yeah, well, and also, man, share a little bit about uh, share a little bit about LDR Studios. Well, um, I've been doing this about twelve years, and um, I did a lot of stuff for free just to build content. Yep, and then, um, you know, you get out and you start mingling in with other creative people and i've in, in a lot of we built a pretty amazing team there's some damn good people that mike parsons mike parsons dustin um tommy baldwin who holy man <laughs> melted our faces <laughs> last night you missed something really special last night you could feel you could feel um man you could feel that guy's heart and soul like the whole night he just laid it all out there um, I yeah. don't know, and that's the kind of thing. It's we we're building this community. Um, it it just kind of by chance more than anything, you know. We we we're bringing on people that are, you know, passionate about helping us share this message. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's been a fun ride up till you know now, and then we're doing. I don't know. Live streaming, it's wild. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, we've already surpassed how many people have. Uh, we've doubled our numbers. I know. Which is, <laughs> if we can keep this growth up, boys, we're gonna be we're gonna be passing the Pat McAfee show in freaking no time. You know what I mean? And the cool part of it is, is we can bounce around to some different camera angles here, which is pretty cool. Um, and, and we can um, actually. Right the there, goal though, for... I'm not sure what's going on with this one. We're frozen on that one, but uh, it probably turned off. We're gonna pop back to this one again camera off Is yeah that, one of the cameras frozen uh right camera that one it's frozen frozen up right camera might need, we might need to refresh that one is yeah. it still on yeah, all right look, hey look mike we're froze frozen solid all right <laughs> come here he'll get it figured out that's yeah, right. man. No, Clark, listen, angles. it's uh, it's super awesome, man. When you think about like what you've done and what you do for people, I think what, you know, your your just passion is, man. I mean, again, Eric and I. Yeah. We all, there we go. We all. Now we're back again, man. Uh, all right. But so that's part of the fun. Set the bar high, and yeah, you get over it, and it feels really good when you pull stuff off like this. Because you know this is out of our wheelhouse, and we're going to put it in the wheelhouse now that we're getting it all figured out. So yeah. Well, and one one of the cool things about like what we're doing is through the connections that we've experienced um, with building a refuge. Um, you know, like Beer Brewery and Harley and those places is like when we ask them, can we come do the live podcast here? They're like, hell yeah. Like we, they, they love to have us here and we love being here and supporting, you know, different locations around the city that have helped us and have come, come together with us. And, and you know, I, I think we've talked about this a dozen times, but Clark came into our life um, when he needed us and we needed him. Yeah. And, for lots of different reasons, but one of the biggest things is what we're doing today in the podcast. And, and, uh, we were, we were going to use some janky equipment with, you know, garage, you know, type style. And it would have been terrible. Yeah. It would have, it would have sucked. Now it's freaking state of the art equipment and Clark's knowledge and Mike and Dustin, those guys, 
just full of knowledge and it's, it's exciting man. yeah it's exciting to where we're at today for sure yeah that's uh I- i'm grateful i know that for sure so well maybe let's talk a little bit about this whole crazy ass idea started around the mental health happy hour and um doing this thing on the road so remember how i warned you <laughs> well yeah <laughs> so i mean i'm a it's it's probably one of my wild ass ideas you know i told clark one day i was like man dude you do so much work editing and do all this stuff for us that i'm like we should we should try to figure out like how to reduce that stress on you yeah because i'm about reducing stress or i like stress <laughs> you know we've got enough i'm a yeah i'm a stress reducing superhero (laughs) so so anyways we said hey let's let's do this you know building a refuge happy hour and or building a refuge mental health happy hour where we can kind of talk about different topics and so on we have one teed up that we're going to talk about here in a minute um but it does give us an opportunity to show people like hey man we're talking about heavy shit but we don't have to uh, feel the heaviness of it, I guess, or that's what we were trying to, you know, do. I think when you when we talked a little bit about earlier what we do as a organization, right? Yeah, um, we can, we can get serious when we need to get serious, and we can get light when we need to get light. Yeah, and and I think that really is dictated by the guys that come around us because, you know, if a guy if a guy is dealing with crazy stuff day to day, there might be a scenario where he just wants to come and let his hair down a little bit. And not really talk about that stuff. Yeah, but and just come okay. and hang out. That's okay. Yeah, like, but, but there, but there might be that guy that really needs to get that stuff off his shoulders. And as sad as a lot of the stories are, we do like bring. We just laugh because we do laugh. Yeah, yeah. laugh or cry kind of thing. But yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, here's the thing: laughter is proven to kind of lighten the anxiety levels within people, and so does Harley riding. <laughs> yeah harley harley riding does the same thing it sure and does. uh you know i think that's a that's kind of fun too but you I mean in all honesty i mean you know i sent out to you guys earlier and i told you i was going to probably tee this up tonight but there was an article that came out today i think wthr might have been the ones that broadcasted it yeah. and it had to do with one of our one of our veterans and uh so as we do we thank all of our veterans uh, for their service, men, women, uh, for all that you've done, current or existing or current or retired, what have you. you. We just appreciate you. But there was an article that came out today about a young man and his mom that were traveling south on 65, and, and he was having a breakdown, and uh, she called 911. And um, uh, law enforcement, who we appreciate them, You know, this isn't anything being critical, but law enforcement showed up. And uh, I'll just say some unfortunate things happened after that. But the most important thing I think here is, is that addressing mental health proactively, I think, is everybody's goal and what we strive to bring in terms of reducing stigma, bringing awareness, education, things like that. And, you know, unfortunately, you know, I think that that this probably only took this guy further backwards in his pathway to getting better. So I bring it up because veterans are a very big part of who we support at Building a Refuge. Uh, One of our great comrades over here, Gavin Good, international artist, right? International artist. I, I can't turn a camera on him. I would, but. Um, but you know, he is a veteran and he's been a big part of supporting building a refuge and LDR studios and everything that we're doing here. And I just can't thank him enough, but, um, I just think in general, a new, oh man, a series he's going to do is pretty dope. Yeah. He's got two pieces done. We're going to come in and check it out. Hopefully our next, uh, next podcast, we're going to, we're going to be talking to him about Yeah. But anyway, Brandon, I know. the, the subject that you're talking about is yeah. a multi-layered conversation. Because oh, yeah. It, it's, it's so difficult because, you know, on one hand, you read that article and you just you feel for that veteran, you feel for his mother, you feel for the situation that they're in. And then on the other side of it, the flip side of it, you feel for the cop who had to do what he had yep. to do. Well, and he's not trained fully to handle some of these volatile situations well we we have a we have a unique perspective because one of the one of our board members is a is a 
is a retired police officer. Um, and one of our good friends, you know, runs the mental health department at uh, lo our local police department. And so we've had multiple conversations with her and with, with him in regards to, you know, what officers deal with, what people deal with when it comes to those calls that they have to go on. Because the number one thing is, you know, as an officer, they have to protect themselves. You know, they have they have to look out. They got families to go home. Yeah, to. Yeah, everybody they, wants to go home at the yeah, end of the day. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And and they have a right to do that. But it's it's a multi-layered onion that you come into when you walk into those situations where, you know, the goal is to not heighten where the person is at. But the problem is, is that they have to they have to put up some kind of a barrier between them and that person who's having that, you know, for lack of a better term, episode that they're going through. So it it is a constant conversation within law enforcement, um, you know, that, that we've we've been privy to some of those conversations, you know, with the work that we do with our local police department. But, you know, the thing is, is that it's unfortunate when it comes when it gets to that point. And, um, you know, when somebody's having a manic episode, which reading through a little bit of that article sounded like this young man was going through they have a, a level of where they can intervene, but they have to protect themselves. And so it, it's yeah. so hard. It's so difficult to, to come to a solution to that because like, like our local uh, police force that we have right now, yeah. like one of the things that they've done is they've, they've brought the fire department into that role and they have a, a person who goes on those calls and what they are finding time after time after time is that it's the same people. It's the same people. And, you know, we, we also know one of the guys who used to have that role with the fire department, Josh, and, yeah. and he, he, they, they call them their clients. That's how frequent those, those, they're revisiting those people and those, and whether they're bipolar, whether they're struggling consistently or they're walking through something that's long-term, yep. they're walking into that. And when they bring the fire department in, they, they don't come with, lights rolling and they don't come with guns blazing and they they don't have they don't do that and so they see a familiar face and it's yeah way less threatening it's a lot less threatening yeah. but not every situation can be like that yeah because you know for those situations they're not in they're not in immediate distress and they're not getting ready to harm somebody they don't they're not holding a gun to their head they're not holding a gun to somebody else's head you know, whatever it may be, if that was the situation, the police department has no choice, but they have to end that thing. Yeah. Yeah. And so it, like I said, it's, it's so multi-layered. Um, yeah, but it really like is. Like you said, to start off with though, Brandon, you can't help, but just feel a, a, a pit in your stomach for the loss of another bed. Oh yeah. No doubt, man. I mean, I've learned a lot through, you know, I've learned a lot through Mike Stevens, who is our, one of our wonderful uh, i'll say volunteers right because i mean that's sure. what he is yeah um mike has provided us a great resource for the va and um extending that out into our community at building a refuge and being able to help out veterans i mean right. i've had i've had a couple of different examples where mike said hey look just have him call me directly and i'll take care of it and, right. and his team has done that and so when i go back to what i say about hey we need to do a better job you know, at taking care of our veterans proactively. I do mean that from the heart. Absolutely. Um, Cause we have a lot of friends. I mean, shit, we have a lot of friends at LDR and at what we're doing here at building a refuge. And I mean, one of the big groups that, you know, helping us out this year for the rock and ride for hope is the American Legion riding chapter out yep. of Cicero. And yep. I mean, they're, they're just a, a, they're a big group of veterans or auxiliary members, if you will, that have family members that have served. Yeah. And it's just really important that we try to proactively take care of them. Right. You know what I mean? I mean, that's, that, right. that's, that's just what we try to do at building a refuge, man. And, and I would encourage, I mean, come out, you know what I mean? It's, it's probably a good time to mention the rock and ride for hope. I mean, beer brewery, it's one of the big reasons we're here. Um, thank you, Clark. You're welcome. Still producing over <laughs> it's here. On the left hand side, we're going to have to talk with our technical uh, producer here. The building a refuge oh, placard is, up, is, on, up the, a little bit, is so. on the left hand side, which is weird, but that's okay. That's all right. People can see it, but um, it's a great opportunity to talk about this uh, coming up in May, May yeah. 18th. Anyways, this is one of our fundraisers, and um, you know we're really excited to be able to partner with places like this. They're coming out. They'll have a beer tent there that day. 
They'll also have soft drinks, water, blah, blah, blah. But, um, you know, again, they're just super supportive of what we do. And um, there's our there's one of our past guests right here coming tonight. We got a nice audience. That's Barry. That's pretty good, right? So, um, anyways, but back to the rock and ride for hope. Uh, Saturday, May 18th, it's uh, motorcycle ride kicks off first thing in the morning. Uh, 10 a.m. kickstands up. You can register from 8 to 10. Uh, we got live music that'll start at about one o'clock, somewhere around there. Five bands headlining the Y store, so that's yeah, going to yeah. be super cool. Excited about that. We'll have food, resources. LDR is doing all the sound. The sound, and we'll do a, a little sizzle reel. But I think we should. Um, we're trying to build a shakedown street, right? We're trying. Yeah. So, so if you're anybody vendor, out there that's interested. Yeah, if you know anybody that likes doing like uh, t-shirts, crafts, anything like that, you know. Come on out, set it up. All we ask for is an in-kind donation. You can set your shop up on Shakedown Street, sell away. So we're That's doing right. a chicken queue again, or Wisconsin chicken throwdown. <laughs> Tell <laughs> them about it, Brandon. I don't know if you can. That, you got to have the Wisconsin. I mean, you got to tell them where it came from. What did you call the throwdown? <laughs> is that Indiana? That's I don't Indiana know. Is that, yeah. is that what people do in it's Indiana? It's definitely not Wisconsin, because you guys are – they're too, well, they're too laid back. So, chowderheads. So, or cheddar, cheddarheads. Chowder, cheddar, you know, whatever. Chowder, cheddar, it all works out, That's man. Boston. So, uh, yeah, thanks for bringing that up, Eric. Or I don't know if Clark brought that up. I don't know. But we are uh, going to do our own food, which That's is right. pretty fun. Uh, I've had a little bit of experience in that. You do. Uh, You're an excellent. Right here at Beer Brewery. But um, so we are going to do a good old Wisconsin chicken cube. Yeah, baby. That's what it's called, chicken cute. Yes. Don't ever call a throwdown ever again. <laughs> <laughs> or I'm going to have Heath kick your ass. Oh, man. Okay? And Heath is a big man. All uh, right. Yeah. Another veteran. <laughs> Clark's like, yeah. Uh, yeah. But anyways, yeah, so that'll be pretty fun. We also have another uh, really good friend of ours that owns a uh, uh, Indiana's own sauce, barbecue sauce, Guy's Creation. So Philip and Latasha will be out with their uh, awesome barbecue sauces. And... Um, we had somebody – oh, they have a, a dessert lady that's going to come out too, I think. So that will be pretty fun. That's great. One of their friends. And um, and all the fixings, right? We got sides. We're going to hope we got sides. <laughs> we're going to have beer. I know we'll that. Come up with something. Yeah, I'm all right. Just we're we're definitely going to have beer. So, yeah. So it's going to be – And rock and roll. A lot of rock and roll and a lot of, lot of loud motorcycles. We're going to have, I think, a 50-50. So get your cash ready. That will be fun. Raise a little money. Again, it's one of our fundraisers, right? right? So. That's right. We can't do this without community support, and uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about our sponsors right now. So Harley Davidson, Indianapolis, located where, Eric? Fishers, Indiana. Fishers, Indiana. Well, I love those guys. They're that's awesome. a that's a badass venue there. Yeah, Adam, the whole David Dellen, the dude. These guys are these are guys are great people. That's where it's all taking place. On LDR team. Studios, located in where? Uh, Noblesville, Indiana. Noblesville, Indiana. They throw down, don't they? We throw down a lot. <laughs> God's they throw down LDR Studios. They can handle all your recording needs. Yes, and more. If you and need more. Them to. We're, we're trying all kinds of new stuff <laughs> this more, year. And more if you need them to. Uh, Everyday GSD. Yeah, baby, Darren, Darren Bebo. Darren, Darren Bebo is it Bebo or Bebo? Bebo. <laughs> Bebo. Okay, Darren. I know. Bebo. We need to have him on so we it, can settle what how he pronounces that. Is then. it Bebo or Bebo? I think Bebo. Bebo. We're gonna say Darren Bebo. Yeah. Everyday GSD. So Darren is a vet. Thank you, Darren. But he's got a podcast that uh, he brings a lot of different people in. But Darren has uh, uh, stepped up on one of our uh, biggest sponsors. So we really appreciate his support. And uh, it goes to a great cause. Tony Bennett Foundation. These guys are amazing. So I've known Tony for a while now. Uh, his family's gone through, uh, I'm just going to say, hell and back. And yeah. if uh, Tony and Tina are listening to us or they get a uh, chance to listen to us, we love you guys and we appreciate everything you do. Tony and their family have been impacted by not only suicide, but some very impactful uh, tragedies in their family, man. And they just have such a positive spirit. What their foundation does do, it's kind of where really I think we've modeled some of what we do, but right. uh, yep. if families that go through loss, whether that be by suicide, overdose, tragedy, what have you, and they don't have the funds to do a funeral, do a service, do whatever, uh, their organization will pay for that to be done. So it's really, really cool, and we really appreciate them. So they came on last weekend as one of our, uh, one of our large sponsors as well, so we we'll really appreciate those guys. Citrus Marketing, Skyler. 
Yeah, she does Thank a great you, job. Yeah, thanks, She's Skylar. Fantastic. And uh, and Simplify Studios, who we mentioned a little bit over. Simplify Studio, he doesn't hear me. He's not paying attention. He's shot too many guns in his life. That's his problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there he Inter is. International artist. <laughs> That's right. International artist. You need some headphones, man. That's what you You coming on? No, he said yeah, he's like, no, he ain't coming on. He wouldn't come on last time. I know. It sucks, crazy. man. Come I want on. him to come on, talk a little bit about his international uh, outreach. We'll and he's got it. some big news coming. So We'll do it next week. Yeah. Next, uh, next time. Next month. Kentucky Zone. Kentucky. I need to get on the mic more. Yeah, Kentucky Zone. Gavin Good. But we really appreciate him. He did a uh, silent auction for us, did a live painting last year, which Clark kind of cock-blocked him and bought the picture. <laughs> Well, you know, not everybody sees art the way I do. And anyway, I ended up with the piece anyway. Oh, it's a badass piece. Yeah. Lit yeah, it on it's fire really and everything. It's good stuff. A little uh, Ghost Rider. See, look, this is the second time. Look at this. Somebody says, too bad this podcast isn't on the speaker system here at Beer North. I know. What Next we gonna time we we're going to get a that. monitor that you lay out in front, you know, like a wedge. Yeah. So when you're. In the band, you got the wedges. You can we can do that or like put a wedge, like a wedge, like a wedge salad. Yeah. Well, maybe, well we can just put, <laughs> maybe Rodney would be willing to go around the bar and just give everybody the link. I think he might. Yeah. I don't know. He could do that. He's well, like, hey, if you guys, well, want. I think the problem is they got to hold their phone up to their. Ears. I, I know an ambassador for JBL that can probably get us a little system. You know, to bring right? in. Well, Clark had a really cool idea, and I kind of like this idea. Have you ever seen a silent DJ? No. Or a silent disco? No. So oh, what yeah, we thought about deal. Yeah. So yeah, what we just, thought about doing is is just get, buying like some wireless headphones or whatever. That'd be killer. Even if it's five or ten of them, when they're out, they're out. Yep. That just that's more yeah, you that know. way we're not interrupting nope. yeah. no. people that don't want to listen. They can throw it on, they can listen to us if they want to like, man, I don't want to listen to these guys. Because yeah. maybe they don't. I mean, Are we gonna tell Mike about the technology add on that we're gonna do? <laughs> I don't know. That's a stress. We we may or may I not do like that. that. You can just we, rent the headphones we or may, sell them. We may or may not tell no, him we're, we're gonna what try we're going to do. Eventually. That'd be cool. Yeah. That'd be really Eventually, cool. we're trying that. What do you think about having Rick on? Uh, he, he will eventually. He's not, he's not ready for that yet. He's not ready you know, for it? So that's a great, that's a great lead-in to, to what we do at yeah. Building Refuge. So I don't know. He's looking ready. We have, you know, a lot of the times when we have our meetings or – you know, we're talking to somebody. We don't have any expectations of people. No. And there's no pressure. It's come as you are. And, you know, sometimes we think that people are ready to tell their stories. We think that yeah, um, it's fair. a great story and it needs to get out there. But until that person's ready, it's kind of like it's kind of like when you're trying to quit smoking, right? You can have a bunch of people tell you that it, you need to quit smoking. But until you're ready, it ain't. Yeah, you're not going to do it. It ain't time. And no. when Rick's Ooh. ready, Rick's ready. We need to we need to have him plug something in here. <laughs> hey, Mike. <laughs> yeah, we, we need. We, yeah, we better. We better. He doesn't have a power cord plugged into this thing. Clark, Clark Crosser is going to go do a little technical uh, technical intervention here. Yeah, we'll talk. We'll talk. So over uh, that about yeah, it. we can we can still talk away. Yeah, yeah it's all good. We're gonna we're gonna pop over to the to the but main you know, cam here. You know, Brandon, I think it's I think it's important to go go back to that conversation that we were talking about with with uh you know police and yeah you know, veteran law yeah. enforcement and, and not necessarily even veterans oh you know yeah. we've we've had we've heard scenarios locally here where it's it's not it's not necessarily veterans it's not necessarily veterans you know but but local people local who are just struggling with things that they're going through and so you know the good thing that that our local at least, I, I can only speak to our local law enforcement yeah. but the, the things that they are doing you know with these the clients that they have yeah. um, you yep. know I think they're really making a difference and you know Angela and her team um, at our local you know law enforcement um, she she heads up the mental health not only for our community but also for the officers and I think that's one thing that we probably need to touch on too is when an officer is confronted with a situation like that, yep. you know, they have to live with it too. You know, they're the ones that have to live with That's it. That's well. exactly right. And it's, it's, it's something that, that Angela and her team and, and the resources that she brings around the officers deal with daily, you know, and they, they have, to, 
<laughs> that's nice. Thing. Do I look as cool as Clark? Yeah, you do. But um, so they they deal with that on a daily basis. And one of the things that we have been privileged to be a part of is being able to contribute. And and this is one of the big things that I really want to touch on. And I hope people here that are out there is that a hundred percent, when we do these fundraisers, a hundred percent of the money that comes through building a refuge goes back out to the community. That's right. And so one of the things that we are privileged to be able to do is support our local law enforcement with a, a fund that we were able to contribute to that's really cool because one of the things that they do for their officers, if you're struggling, they'll get you mental health therapy, but not only the officer, but their families. Um, and, and they support the family as a whole. And I think that's being, they're pretty progressive here in our, in our local community. And I'm hoping uh, that the model that they have gotten uh, that they're putting together, that that begins to spread throughout the country. Yeah, uh, no doubt. So, so it's probably a good opportunity too, man. I mean, you this year, I know I've had the opportunity, but the this year we also participated in the local Hamilton County. Hamilton yeah. County is located here in central Indiana, but you presented in front of what, probably 150 officers? Yeah, probably. Yeah. And um, what was that? Just share a little bit about that. It's just one of the other areas in which, you know, we have outreach into the community. Yeah. So they, they call on us and have for about five years now. I think we had a little break with COVID, but for like five years in a row, I think you did it one year, Brandon, but they've asked us to come in and speak to the police department for two reasons. Um, one of the reasons was to be a resource for the police officers. So one of the big things that they struggle with sometimes is there might be somebody who's going through some struggle, you know, some dark times, and the police department gets called. You know, a cop gets called to, the, right. to the location. But they're not at that point where they need to refer them off to somebody, where they need to, you know, put them in handcuffs, or they need to take them to a stress center. One of the things that they need are resources that they can refer guys off to that, like ours, yeah, that can be something of a little bit softer nature to where – they can have ongoing, they can have ongoing communication. They can yeah. have, they can on, ongoing peer support. That's right. And so I was there to talk about from that aspect, but yeah, then yeah, also yeah. what we were able to do is take, you know, ask the police, Order. the police that are there to take that hat Order. off, you know, yeah. take that hat off and, you know, go get into the lives of the officers who are, I was standing in front of. And yep. not only to understand what they're going through professionally, hey, but also going through personally. Yeah. So time out right there. Okay. Because I don't want to. I don't want to stop that conversation. I want to yeah. continue on with it. But our guest just showed up. Oh yeah. Sadie Johnson. Where's? <laughs> I was so intent in talking, I didn't see you. No. In. Yeah. We, we were like, I tried to get Mike to go help her bring some. Well, he no, did. He's Look, over there. Now. He's got it now. So all right. So Mike's a team I, I didn't mean to interrupt you there because that it it, it that whole that whole effort that angela and the entire team that she does is unbelievable well and and I, we're just we're humbled to be a part of it um, yeah. and we're humbled that angela has asked us to be a part of it and like i said and and this and we've had a couple conversations with some stress centers and some and community hospital yeah that's right some of the local hospitals and the thing that they love about organizations like ours is like what what the director actually told me at st vincent's was she she said we love what we love about organizations like yours is that probably 30% of the people that phone into their stress center and yep. get appointments or come into their stress center, they don't necessarily need to be at that point yet. Um, they just need community support. They need mental health therapy. They need outpatient therapy. And while we don't supply therapy because we're not licensed therapies, we're just a right, couple, right, couple right. with stories. Um, but we do have referrals and, and resources that we can refer people to. Yeah. But what they love about it is that it's a referral source for them so that it can lighten their wait list. That's because right. right now there's two of the biggest hurdles to mental health wellness that we, you and I love to refer it to as is cost number yep. one. Yep. And just getting a freaking appointment. Yeah. No, shit, right just now, getting in, Yeah, just getting in. And part yeah. of the reason that that is, is that th there's a backlog. There's a backlog in, in like stress centers and different places like that. Yep. I mean, if you're not in immediate distress, 
you got sometimes a two, three. Well, it's four no different. Well, think about this. It's no different than that story that we just read. That's right. That's a hundred. I mean, that mom was driving south for one reason or another with her son, veteran again. Yep. And had a breakdown on the way, and she didn't know what else to do. She had no idea what to do. And, and guess and, who and, came? And that's the story, time and time and time again, that we hear. Right. I don't know where to go to get my husband help. I don't know where to go to get my son help. But just as important to what that, what Angela and her team does, just as important to that, those officers that showed up on scene, and I'm just, I'm only assuming this, and I don't, I don't want to, I'm not like drawing a line in the sand at all here. I'm just assuming. Yep. They, they came to a very stressful situation. They didn't know what they're dealing with. Right. And we don't we don't know what which, they were faced with when they pulled up on the scene. Which tells me training. That's right. Training. That's 100% exposure, training. Exposure. Yeah. Training. Right? Yeah. And 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 also proactive help for our veterans. But for our law enforcement, training so that when they go into those situations, because I can't imagine I'm not a police officer. I've never been in one of those situations. Um, like how stressful that actually can be. Oh, I, I can't yeah. imagine. Because you don't know. It's it's an interesting call. I'm I'm assuming uh, an, an an additional run because you don't know what you're walking into. Right. You, know, you don't know if somebody's just having a bad day, or if they're bipolar, or they forgot to take their meds that day, or w- they're wielding a gun. Ice. You have no idea. That's right. What they're dealing with, and so they have to assess that within seconds. And that yeah. when I when I got an opportunity to go speak with, you know, the police department. They they were expressing that. they're like Eric you don't you don't understand like when we pull up on us on on a on a call we have seconds to react yeah and and our our careers and the things that we do are judged in seconds that's right in milliseconds and so you know I, it, it is training but like you mentioned it's peeling back the onion and really getting to a point where we can become proactive but right now. There's so much need and so many things going on that everyone around us and everybody in those scenarios, they're all reactive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, 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 we had an opportunity to meet with a college, a local college here and, 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 a, and a, a local fraternity, and they're like, we don't have an opportunity to be proactive because we're dealing with all these things. We're dealing yeah. with all these mental health stresses, you know, of college kids and things like that. So you just – it's it's so many different sectors. Every story is different. Every yeah 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 totally. You know it's not it, it it's it's so difficult to assess and say it's one thing that we need to do. It's fifty different things that we need to do. Right. And, and one of the things that we, you know, you and I and Clark, like we talk about this all the time. It's like our role is, you know, and and I put it this way, and it's probably not the best way to put it, but like we get our hands dirty. We do. And, and, yeah, and, I mean, and we do. Th- what I mean by that is we don't just say, hey, man, I'm sorry you're going through your bad day. Here's a here's a card and here's here's your counselor's number. No, because we know that when you get that card, when you call that number, you yeah. got a two month wait. That's right. Like right off the rip. You got a two month wait. So what happens in that two months? You know, what can happen in a man or a woman's life or a family's life in, in, in just a just a short two months? So that's where we're at. And we feel like building a refuge, we're a gap filler in, in the way that we can be that soft place to land for just a short period of time. We can develop a relationship. We can develop, um, you know, hopefully they, they will respect what we're doing. And then we have trusted resources that we can refer them off to. Right. That maybe, because they're getting referred from us, might be able to get in a little sooner. Yeah, yeah. You know, we yeah. can't make that promise. Well, I think. But we can. Part of it is. We're acknowledging that mental health issues are health issues. That's right. That's I agree with you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I think when people realize that you can get comfortable. Yep. I mean, I I think we've created an environment where people can kind of let their hair down, for lack of a better word. That's a right. great point, Clark. Yep. And uh, and maybe that's their. I think sometimes we're the first chance for them to share their feelings or express, um, you know, they're expressing concern about how they're feeling, but there's not a lot of places you can go. Not even some of my closest friends did I feel like I was, 
wanted to unload all the shit I was going through. Right. But I think we're inviting enough and we create a comfortable environment. We're building a community so they feel like they're a part of something. Um, and I think in today's world, we're just now accepting the fact that mental health issues are really, really big and important yeah. to deal with. Um, it, yeah. We just kept swept, sweeping it under the rug. But, well, we did. But I mean, too, I think, I think you know, Clark, because you and I have experienced, you know, that, like, you feel, what's up, Barry Hart? Love you, buddy. Um, you know, you, you just feel really burdensome, like, telling somebody, like, what you've been through. Like, here's the deal. I, I tell people, I just told this to somebody today. I said, hey, listen, you know, within a five-year period, I lost my brother and my stepsister by suicide. Yeah. Like, they just, people are just are shocked. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like they just, they don't, they don't even know what to say back And but I know this through the different like coaching and, you know, friends and, uh, counselors, things like that. You know, I've been taught how to be comfortable with like saying my brother Brent's name, saying my stepsister Sophie's name, right? Like talking about them, like they haven't done anything wrong. Right. They're not here with us today, and I'm extremely sad about that, but it's not like they've done anything wrong. And I'm not glorifying suicide, okay? That's not it either. No. Thank you, brother. But somebody once said to me, and I will say it on here because we say things, do you think either one of them were really them when that happened? And I'm like, hell no. Yeah. So then they say, well, it's like any other disease when somebody has cancer or when somebody has cardiac disease or when somebody has, uh, you know, intestinal disease or a brain disease. It's a, it's a, it's a disease. It's a, it's an, it's an issue that is real. And we treat that stuff aggressively. Right. Like yeah. in, we don't mental health stuff. We don't treat aggressively enough. Well, and, and Clark, you, you mentioned it and then Brandon, you went right into it as well. And, we've talked about this a lot. One of the things that is great about building a refuge and, and other organizations that per, do what we do is when you go, part of the reason that I didn't feel comfortable, you know, Clark, I know you've mentioned it, you know, Brandon, you've mentioned it is that the person that you maybe want to go talk to can't relate to what you've been through. Right. They have no idea what you've but been through. But we assume that. Yeah, well, you know what I mean. Like yeah, again, we yeah. we were assuming that. Yeah, and, yeah. And and the thing about building a refuge is because we've been doing this for six years now, we've been blessed with a lot of really good dudes that have come into our world. Yep. And so when we have a situation where a new guy comes and says, "Hey, I'm dealing with A, B, C, or D," we can say, "Hey, Clark, this dude's got a similar story to you." can you sit down with them? And it's like immediately they've got somebody that they can relate to that shares a similar story. And, you know, like with Brandon, you know, one of his biggest concerns was when, when you lost your brother and you and I've had this talk many times, it was because of my experience and the things that I went through, I can relate to possibly what was going through your brother's head you know oh yeah you know no and, absolutely and it's like I can't, I can't tell you what was going through his head but i can tell you what was going through my head sure. when i went through my attempt and 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 that's just relate that's relatable i can give you a little bit of a picture but also you know it it it, it runs a gamut alcoholism addiction pornography yeah. all that stuff like all these guys have come into our world and they, we can refer them off right away. And that's that easy approach that we speak about a lot. Yeah. And yeah. that's what happens at Harley Davidson when we, when we sit down and have those monthly meetings, man. Like, like, for example, we just had a guy, we just had a guy reach out to us on Facebook and I thought he was going yeah, through, I, I right. thought he was going through a, dist, a, 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 a time of distress. He reached out and said, Hey, I'd like to support mental health. Well, I thought he was going through a time. All he wants to do is help. Yeah. Like he wants, he right. wants to be a part of what we're doing. Yeah. So we're going to meet with him next month and, and, and see what he wants to do. 
And so in those types of things, not only that, but who reached out today? Mm-hmm. Remember you told me today, you're like, Hey man, did you read that email? <laughs> oh yeah. 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 <laughs> but I mean, that's just the thing. And, and sure. Have we done some outreach as well? But sure. I think when people understand us and the fact that we're trying to do things a little bit, I don't want to say differently because we are addressing mental wellness. We are addressing mental health. We right? are different though, but we are a little different. You're different yeah. But I mean, I hope my hope is, is that, you know, we can touch a wide variety. Like, interestingly enough, I was looking at statistics on Facebook the other day with our people that like us. We're up to 180, almost 190 subscribers to this YouTube channel. Awesome. If you're on here tonight, tell your friends, like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. It's the way it starts building algorithms and starts getting out there. So please, if you, you know, if you can just subscribe to the channel, that's the way we can get more messaging out. But Statistically speaking, you know, we have uh, folks that listen in that are as young as, you know, 18. Right. Yeah. And we have folks that listen in as old as 80. Okay. And and there's a real need for that population between 65 and above. I'll just say 65 and above because here's right. the thing. And I don't want to be remiss talking about it because here's the deal. I see it firsthand through my own family members that have lost loved ones. It gets real lonely. Yeah. And that's yep. a serious, it's a serious, serious issue. Yeah. Hence why I'd love to have a guest come on that, you know, is of that age bracket to talk about that. Right. Yeah. When they're ready. I mean, I'm not, yep. we're not, I'm not going to force anything, but I just think that it's an age group that is um, sometimes forgotten. Yeah, if you want my, that's just the honest opinion. And uh, you know, there's there's a lot of subjects with people of that age because it's there's loneliness from loss. There's right. also the caretaker side of things, yeah, where they're they're taking care of their spouse or you know an, another loved one or whatever it may be. And neighbor, I mean, who yeah. knows? I mean, it, it runs a gamut, and that's that's why we just kind of leave ourselves open to whatever comes our way. Yeah, and, and we know that. Because we've experienced it time and time and time again through those meetings at Harley and through our Facebook page where people come in, they ask a question, and then it's like, holy shit, like the floodgates open. And and we're like, okay, here's maybe a new one that we haven't covered, or here's one that we have, and we've got somebody to refer them off to. And and our hope is is that we can build and gain a relationship with that person where they'll trust us enough to refer them off to either a person or a clergy clergy member or uh, yeah. a, a mental health therapist or whatever they need. If we can't find it, we will, we will we'll find, over yeah, we'll find it. To find I it. mean, our first encounter, I basically backed up my truck and beep, beep, beep. Yeah. And like, that's really the first time I got to dump all the shit. Yeah. I can. Yeah. Yeah, man. <laughs> Dude, I'm, you can put the glasses, on. Put glasses back on. Baby. In one sitting, you know, like it's okay. You can <laughs> I love it. Uh, yeah. Shit. So like, it, it's real. Like when you when you find some place where you can actually feel safe. Yeah. To unload, or you know, it's like you're opening up. You're not alone. It's the thing. So right, you know, right. It's, uh, it's easy. It's an easier approach when you know you guys are you were open to allowing me That's to right. be open. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's yes. important for them to I hear know. that. I know. It's important for them to hear <laughs> I was going to let you go, I, buddy. I, um, no, you're you exactly know. right, Clark. Yeah. It's, um, and you are, look, you, like, this is why we love you so much. And this is why we asked Clark to be on our board of directors because yep, he's a huge, right. huge part of this. Organically, Clark, you are the, you are the example of our hopes and what we hoped to do. I mean, let's just be real about yep. it, Eric. Yep. I mean, we hope that we would sometime reach somebody that was going through shit clark lost his son by suicide one of our friends reached out to clark and said hey go check these dudes out because they're not a bunch of dick bags right sometimes um they meet at a pretty cool environment and just go hang out with them well and when i first met you like i've told people this a million times i mean i thought thought you were in buying harley and then you just smoked me you know i mean literally smoked me yeah that's right but i mean that's the cool part about all this because it's what keeps the fire burning in me to do this, you know, and I just, I love you for it, brother. Like you're, you're, 
we're we're brought together by a higher power than for sure for just, sure you well, know and here, here's here's the thing that i love about it is that we are we are not you say it all the time brandon we are not fixers amen we are never going to fix the fact that clark has a missing piece in his heart from the loss of his amen son. yeah that's right never exactly right that. and yeah. no one's ever going to do that yeah all we can do is ride with him and <laughs> and and hang with him and laugh with him and cry with him and and that's what that's all we're trying to do it's not freaking rocket science it's just giving shit yeah that's all it is and 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 that's the difficult thing is when and that's what i meant earlier by saying getting your hands dirty is that's hard amen that is really hard to sit in front of a dude who is laying it all all on the table yep and and not respond with okay i'm going to try to fix this that's that's what we do well because we want to do that right away we do yeah We, we try to do it in our marriages and we fail we try yep. to do it in personal relationships. We fail. We try to do it in our business life. We fail. We fail. And and when we understand and we humble ourselves to know that all we need is a group of dudes around us that give a shit. Yep. That's all we need, man. Yeah. That's all we need. Yeah. I mean, that is just. Uh, I love it, man. We got a little comment in there, right on, Eric. I love it, brother. Keep it, keep it rolling. You got a little feedback, bro. It's good. That's huh? sweet. Yeah, I love sweet. it. But now it's share, like, and subscribe. So, and- so, all right, guys. So here's another here's another topic that we talk a lot about. And Eric, that's the, you know what you were kind of navigating down. I think is is to me is the word community. That's right. That's what we do. And I would encourage anybody that's going through shit out there right now, find a community. I'm, I'm looking over at my good buddy Rodney over here. Good friend, probably one of the best disc golf players that I've seen here in Central Indiana. But that is a great community of people. It's great dudes. You go out, you walk 18 holes of disc golf, and you know what you do? You talk to one another. That's right. You encourage one another. You make fun of one another when you throw your fucking disc in the water. Yep. One of your buddies might take his shirt off and his pants off and go in and get it. (laughs) Awesome. It, but but you know what I'm saying? Like, it's a community. Clark, you talked a lot about it on our podcast. So for those of you listening, go out to our channel. You can see Clark's story. You know, Clark had a wonderful community. Jerry, Connor, thank you much, buddy. Thank you to beer. Um, hey, come on in. Yeah, but it is all about a community. Clark, you're going to you're gonna let her jump in there? Yeah, I'm going to let her jump come in. Come on in. Yeah, we got to get you on here for a few minutes, young lady. <laughs> this is awesome, man. So what we try to do yeah. here on our, on our uh, happy hours. What's up? We try to bring guests in. We try to bring people in who are a part of our community yeah. okay. that we love and cherish. And, and uh, yeah, you know, Sadie is one of those people. Can you hear us, Sadie? That's so good. Oh, yeah. Us? Get up on that mic. It's, it's, uh, so this I learned. Is, this is LDR technology, baby. <laughs> so Mike taught us, Sadie, these are not wide range mics. They're dynamic mics. Oh, yeah. You know about this, right? I do. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, I do. So let, yeah. let, me, let, let me give you a little picture of what sadie has done for building refuge so it this is so See, cool. i told you you're a beautiful human man this is so cool and then i'll let her talk because that's right she needs to talk yeah um, sadie i think you've probably played at every single one of the events that we've had our, major, a lot of our, our major events most of them yeah, yeah. yes and, yes and what what we will so so they're not in suspense we will turn the cameras around when you're playing and give them a a, a picture of the way you play and what you do because it brings joy to people's lives and we appreciate you so much and the the cool thing about the cool thing the cool thing about this is Sadie is not just an outstanding musician but she fits right in with what we're doing at Building Refuge because of her music therapy band. amen that's right and so we're going to hear the music but what we want to talk about with you today is the importance of your music therapy yeah. and what you do. So can you speak to that a little bit? Tell the viewers who you are, what you do. and Yep. So tell us where you're from. Yeah. Give us kind all of that. a little bit of that front end stuff. Okay. Okay. And then tell us a little bit about music therapy. Okay. man. I'm I mean, gonna... I know. Yeah. Just hold yeah, the mic, man. Yeah. Yeah. Get comfy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we do. Right. Just get comfy, man. Because like Eric said, it is important. You and I have had a couple of discussions around it, but we, I know, right? But our listeners don't probably know. Most of them don't have no idea what that means. So yeah, take it away. Um, So I, 
I am actually from California originally. Okay. Uh, moved all over the place for dad's job. He's a Navy guy. Thank Sweet. you for oh, service. Absolutely. Appreciate that. Oh, man, for like 11, 11 years active duty. I'm like... Jeez, wow. Louise, my dude. <laughs> and then, well, like, yeah. That's a couple. You, that's thank a couple. You your, thank you to your Ooh. dad. Yeah. yeah. Cool guy. Yeah, cool yeah, guy. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and so uh, we landed in Bloomington, Indiana, and my sisters and I all started playing music um, when we were relatively young. And um, when I was about 14 years old, there was a blues festival out in Winter Park, Colorado yes. that we were looking at. And we're like, oh, my gosh, that looks super cool. Samantha Fish was playing. And my mom's like, I just want my girls to meet this, like, incredible human and female guitarist. Um, and so then that actually turned into us meeting John Cat, which led to Blue Star Connection and my work with Blue Star, right which on. is um, a nonprofit based in Colorado, okay, and they support music therapy programs. Uh, and that's um, called Blue Star? Blue Star Connection. Blue Star Connection. Okay, are, right are they throughout the country? or? It's just in Colorado, it's just in Colorado. Okay. but they they help kids around the world and that's now awesome. reaching to yeah, adults. Yeah, that's fantastic. That's uh, so cool. I love cool. it. Yeah, and I just fell in love with music therapy, yeah. and I was like, oh my gosh, this is exactly what I want to do yeah. with my life. So went and did the college thing for way too many years, but I got the board certification and okay. um, did my internship here at Riley. Right on. And so working um, as a music therapist, as like a board certified music therapist, it's not just playing music to make the other person feel good, but it's, yeah. it's using music as the vehicle to improve health. Yeah. In whatever way. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Yeah. So like songwriting um, and understanding and like listening to um, different types of music can take you on a journey. Like there are music therapists that have crafted together. This is actually one of the first um, introductions of music therapy, yeah. which was for World War One vet. Oh, get oh, out. Cool. Uh, yeah. So it comes, that. It oh, comes back I love, to I the vet. I, I, lo I love yeah. that, man. That's really cool. Because everyone was coming home with that psychosis That's right. and, and could not understand and figure out how to deal with it. Well, we know that we music has to deal with it power, today. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, and so there are so many music therapists working in the mental health side of things okay. that like, were super geared towards helping vets yeah, and yeah. and getting men it's okay to like talk through your emotions if it's through like rock tunes you know it's right, not yeah. just right. like a classical based it's like dude what are you feeling right now yeah. and how can how can we get there yeah um but the person's doing the transformation through the musical experience right on. so it's interesting because eric and i were just talking about this a little bit earlier there was a story that just came out probably about i don't know it was around four o'clock today and there was a veteran um, traveling with his mom in southern Indiana, and um, he was having a breakdown on the way down uh, south. So they called 911, right? And I'll just say this, music therapist wasn't the first person that showed up. So unfortunately, and like Eric and I said, we have a tremendous respect and a tremendous thanks for our law enforcement. And we were just talking about this a little bit earlier today. One of the things that we do is we have the opportunity to talk to a lot of police officers, uh, police women, if you will, um, because Hamilton County does a really good job of training these folks for really stressful, high stress situations. But I just think it's important because as we were talking about it, we were just saying like how important it is. I think we can do so much better with our veterans. Oh, and I love God. the fact like you bring that point up that what you do, your passion around it, it goes back as far as World War One. Yeah. Like, that is amazing to me, man. Like, because we all know, we all know somebody, a family member, friend, whatever, that has come back from a war, conflict, whatever, and struggles to, to reintroduce back into normal society. So, so and, Sadie, that, yeah. that organization, tell me again the name of the organization. Blue Star. Blue, Blue Star. Star Connection. Blue, yep. so Blue Star Connection. Do you, do you still work with them? Like, um, I am not as heavily as uh, involved with them. Uh, you're killing it in your music Because I'm just like trying to be a rock star. <laughs> Hell yeah, you are. But, <laughs> We're going to uh, try to get you there, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I actually played a Blue Star Denver event, which um, like all around actually the country, they do um, little events for Blue Star Connection and give all the money, like net proceeds to Blue Star. Yep. Um, so my family and I, we posted a couple here in Indiana and there is a Denver event back in like September that I went out and played. Yeah, I remember so, seeing the videos of it. Yeah, yeah. it was super cool. So yeah. what, what, like when you, 
like do you literally like sit down one on one with somebody and like have a therapy session with them? What does it look like? So for no, for, I don't know anything about music therapy, yeah. and, and you know, I'd love to hear more about it. Yeah. But, so just as a disclaimer, I'm not practicing right now. That's okay. okay. You're I not just, helping us, I right? Just, like, now. No. All no, right. For, I mean, for for let's see. Look at this. Look no. at this. Tech, for all you folks out there, talk to that camera right there. For all you folks, she's not clinically like helping us right now sadie we have to give that disclaimer <laughs> every time every we get single on. freaking time because we are not therapists either we're just a couple of dudes with stories there you go. You know? yep. so sorry to interrupt uh, go. oh no it. it's go. all good um but i um there's so many different ways a session can look like a music therapy session can look um let's take like a very generic one that a lot of people think of like uh people who have alzheimer's disease okay Right. So you're in a, a nursing home. Um, sometimes it can be those one-on-one -on -one sessions if there are individual goals that um, the music therapist believes that the client could reach better by themselves, not yep. in a group, you know, yep. right? Yep. Um, and so that can be literally them just singing song, familiar songs together, yeah. Yeah. that client preferred music. That's what, that's the big key okay. there, client okay. preferred. Yeah. So that's why the music therapist has to be the best musician possible. You got to be well-rounded. Uh, right? yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Um, and so... So then you go through and sing those songs and maybe it's the, the client singing very kind of mm, behavioral, like singing five out of the 10 times that yeah. we sing these songs. Yeah. Um, again, very behavioral based, but then you can have a little bit more of a humanistic base. Whoop, nope, that's it. Yeah. Hey, good, it. Call, good catch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, humanistic kind of practice where um, really the client is leading the session. And the oh, music therapist is there. Maybe the client is improvising on xylophone or yeah. on piano, and we're there strictly to help just support yeah, yeah, and yeah. contain and hold. And then there can be verbal processing and verbal discussion after that. Yeah. But again, we're not talk therapists. Yeah, so we no, don't I got you. necessarily, that's not what everyone's super trained in, yeah, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, but let's see, there can be group sessions like in a children's hospital where there are, um, there are heart, the heart center group where sure. a bunch of kiddos that were there for a year waiting for a heart yep. would get together, write songs, um, uh, about the experience great. or, or do shows. Yeah. Um, yeah. it's performing music, it's singing music, it's, it's improvising, it's completely going wild and then, and then just feeling such it. an outlet. Like it's so such an outlet. Cool, and yeah. it's not just like sitting and listening with your earbuds. Yeah, like it's, it's not like throwing on a CD and listening to it. Yeah, yeah. You mentioned yeah. that to me one time before. Like I think you mentioned how you approach or you've done this before in the past. Is like one of your first questions might be like, "Hey, what kind of sound do you like?" Yeah. Whether that might be a waterfall, or it might be the wind, or it might be ambient noise like we're sitting listening in here right yep. or maybe it is a guitar maybe it is a horn maybe whatever who knows what it is but that you like start out right like that is the base like it, it's the iso principle it's meeting the person where <laughs> that, they like, are are you out. sure you're not right like, <laughs> doing something right now <laughs> but but yeah that. that's that's absolutely as any sort of therapist but especially music therapist because you could come in especially on the behavioral health unit you know yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, or working with those vets who are in the state of crisis yeah where their energy is a 10 out of or a ten thousand out of 10 yeah you know we can't meet that energy. However, we can't come in and be like, hi. Yeah. Music yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you got to be like, all right, I see you. I hear you. You are here. We're feeling it. Like, We're going to so, do this today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then what's, a, what's an intervention that you can start out with that gets the person just back in their body? Yeah, that's cool. Right? Like Maybe out of that manic state. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's a breathing routine where it's in for four counts, out for four counts. Imagine yeah. the box, right? Yeah. All those things. But then as the music therapist, we get to add guitar. And then every time you hear a change, you you breathe in, you exhale yeah. Right, yeah. with the guitar. So then it's getting them to really, really listen. That's just one example. And hone in on something. I love it, man. We need so, to have her in. For yeah, well, I, I was just no, I was just no, just thinking the same thing. Like one, we'd love to have you come on and like, uh, 
we've talked about this like sit down we can just do a podcast on music therapy you know what i mean and yeah. do it at, yeah. at the studio and for sure you know this environment one of the things that we're trying to do sadie is bring some lightness right to uh the whole world of we like to frame it up as mental wellness but mental health let's just call it what it is yeah. and um you know we strive to do the same thing i think you do when we come into something and that is not be like hey what's going on today <laughs> Eric, are you feeling okay? Right. right. Like, that's, like, you're going to be like, yeah, no, you get, you get I'm not doing that shit. You know so what I mean? Okay. So we, yeah. we do our very best at trying to create these environments because they are fun and it's super cool, you know, having somebody like you that one, you're, you're, you're in this swim lane, right? You, you do this, but you also are an amazing musician. So before we let you get up there and start, you know, impressing everybody, yeah. Tell everybody a little bit about you. You just put out a new CD, right? Yes, put out is. new. I don't even know. Can we call it a CD or do you? What do you call it an today? An album? It's a, well, it's like. Do, a do you have any vinyl? Because I wanted some vinyl. Um, we're working on it. All right, sweet. Yeah, we're Perfect. On it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, just really amazing, by the way. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yep. Uh, my first like EP, so it's not quite long enough to be a full like. Okay. Album. Well, yeah. You know, so a little EP action, seven tunes. Love it. Um, six originals and one cover. Um, and I'm just like starting to come into my own sound. Good. Um, I love that. Does I I have one more question, and I'm yeah. curious. Does because you mentioned songwriting along with yeah. your therapy too. Does do you take bits and pieces from the people? I know you can't like speak of people that you like. Does that is that part of your songwriting? Like part of what you do? Ooh, um, you know, actually, and I, you're getting some love on the internet. Look at this, ooh. Sadie. This is so interesting. Love it. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Um, so, oh, hey, hitting the big Indiana sign. Don't knock oh, down. No. Um, so I personally have not done any. That's like that's grief work. You know, understanding yeah. your grief, like through processing other people's experiences. Okay. I know of music therapists who have, they don't write specifically like word for word what happened with a right. session or yeah. a client, but yeah. they can use that like to reminisce and to maybe closure for closure if the patient passed away or like, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I definitely think that songwriting is really interesting for me. Sometimes I love it. Sometimes I hate it. Yeah. So that's not like a therapeutic way. <laughs> hit a block every once in a while. Oh, like most of my life I'm in a block. <laughs> and that that's, sucks. And the reason I ask that question you is just because. You need to call Cassidy more often. That's I do. You, <laughs> the reason I ask that question is because um, when, when we talk to therapists and the, my picture, when they sit all day long and listen to people's problems, like what's their outlet? Like what, what is, how can they out? And, and a lot of them, it's music, mm -hmm. you know? And so I'm thinking to myself, okay, what is a outlet for a music therapist? Mm -hmm. Like what the hell do you guys do to like let go of that stuff? You That's know? a great question, Eric. It's that a, would be a yeah. great question on a podcast, I think. Oh, there you oh, go. Yeah, right? Oh, should we just like leave We're them gonna, waiting? Well, no. I mean, I think <laughs> we should keep people in suspense a little bit. Save I mean, that one seriously. Oh, look, you listen to <laughs> oh, Clark. Oh, shut up. I was like, where did he come in? See, we should have <laughs> had a camera turn back around on Clark. Clark's got all these fancy little gadgets, you know? You're going to learn it. to love Clark more and more as you get to know him. <laughs> like, he comes up with some really cool shit, and then he's got some really fun, like, little fun little gadgets. So There you go. Um, so it's natural distractions, right? That's yes. the name of it. Yes. Yep. And it just dropped or came out, what, a couple months ago? December 1st. December yeah. 1st. Well, awesome. congratulations, congratulations on that. I listened to it today when I ran and it's great. It's great. The whole thing's amazing. Go check it out. Spotify, Apple, all the social all of it. Yeah. streaming, well, all we'll that shit. Put, we'll have to put her information in the comments. Well, yeah. if Mike... Clark, this we'll is a call. If Clark, Mike would have seen these little cool tiles, so yeah. we're going to pop that up because you are going to be hey. playing at the 2024 the road, Rock and Ride for Hope. That's me. We're jamming on yeah, that, hey. right? Huh? Do you love Who this? Who else is on there? So we got uh, the Y Store's head headlining. Do you know Wait, them? the Y Store? Yeah. Yeah. You know them? Time, well, I know... Yeah, I know well, I, I don't know them personally, but I I know of them and they know of me. All right, right? cool. It's that well, you're gonna deal. be on the stage well, with them, which is kick well, ass, just, right? Look at that. So we got Y Store headlining for us. We have a rockabilly band playing because we wanted to kind of flare it up a bit. The, okay. Have you ever seen like this culture of rockabilly, folks? Kind of like the Billy Strings. Super, kind of. No, 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 like the fifties. 
Oh, like oh, big they're hair, wild. Big boots, like yeah. well, they're fun. Like stray cats. So super yeah. fun. Yeah, yeah. Stray, stray cats. Yeah. That's yeah. right. You got it. So they're gonna like open the day for us. And then we got Big in Belgium. I think you maybe have known those. Some of those okay. guys are good buddies with my with us. They've played a lot of our events as well. And then yourself and Tommy. So it's Sweet. a great lineup, man. Yeah. Five bands gonna be rocking. The great part of it is, Sadie, guess how long you'll play. How long? <laughs> she doesn't even Not know. Not three hours. Oh my gosh. What about four? <laughs> no. <laughs> Not four Not either. Four. Six. You're playing six hours. <laughs> well, hell, the last time she played, she got she got rained out or, or lightened out yeah, for us at oh the yeah, DFW. Oh, yeah, that's right. Remember? You did. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Lightning hit. And so we're gonna oh, hope for that. Wild. So we have a uh, we have a 24 by 30 foot stage coming in. Perfect. LDR is doing all the sound, so it'll be like legit setup. We'll have a nice little area for everybody to chill out, hang out before everything goes on. Okay. Um, all of this to support mental health, right? So Fantastic. right up your alley. Um, so it should be cool. And um, no, you're not playing three hours. So we're looking Good. at probably like 45 minutes to an hour set. Oh, shoot. Beautiful. That's fantastic. Right? <laughs> that huh? yeah, I, awesome. We will be asleep because <laughs> I go on at like two or three. <laughs> so like the band will still yeah. be waking up. Well, the cool night. part about this is, too, is we're doing a big motorcycle ride around it this year. And we have a group of uh, it's the American Legion Riding Club out of Cicero. Okay. Super, super cool. Bunch of great guys and, and women. And um so they're hosting it. So it's like a kickstand up one big, massive group. Wow. And so we're trying to get this scheduled. So like when everybody rolls back in, um, it'll be like right as things are kind of rocking. So okay. everything is out front this year at Harley, not back in the back. Yes. So everything will okay. be out front, like in the great viewing area. And so, yeah. Sweet. Pretty excited about that. We're just, you know, praying for good weather. Yes. That's absolutely. what we got to pray for. So, yeah, vendors for a shakedown street. Yeah. If you know any vendors, <laughs> Clark craft really wants vendors, shakedown street. Anything like that, like friends that like do fun shit, tie dyes, anything like Make that. Dope. Yeah, soap. I don't know. <laughs> I got a front of weeks <laughs> earrings, but soap. I don't know. If that's <laughs> like, I don't yeah. know. If this is the crowd for earrings. <laughs> Bring earrings, man. Oh, earrings yeah. are fine. Are you yeah. yeah, you never know. Like, yeah, buddy. You get anybody like, face painting, you know, shit like that. That's right, fun, I'll see right? What I can do. Yeah, kettle corn. Everybody likes kettle corn. You know. My roommate, she took up pyrography. Pyro, what? it's like burning the wood. <laughs> Oh, nice. She did, You're, she by did, your way, your roommates are Gavin. fun. The the We didn't actually get to meet them. Like, I don't know them personally, but they came out to one of your shows one night when we were at the Carmichael. I think it's oh, the gosh. first time. Like, <laughs> sure, do you remember that? And they're, like, all of our roommates were there, man. And they're like, wow. Watch my woo girls. Yeah, man. It's so great. <laughs> your woo girls? What yeah, do you call them? Your woo girls? My woo girls. Yeah, buddy. They come out there like, woo, Yeah. Woo. I'm like, could you be any more, like, feminine when you do it? I mean, it's just like, <laughs> or I'm like, that, those are my roommates. I love those are mine. it. I yep. love it. I yep. love it. All That's right. Awesome. So any, what's coming up for you? Anything anything coming up on the schedule for you? Yeah, here? Where are you playing at? Oh, man. I've got a big show coming up at the Slippery. Nope, nope, nope. The Jazz Kitchen. <laughs> nope, 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 nope. The Maybe Slippery Noodle. Jazz Kitchen. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Um, When's the Jazz Kitchen? May 8th. May 8th, Ooh, okay, right on. Or May 7th, I don't know, it's a Wednesday. Okay, right like on. Like that, that Wednesday right there. Yeah, yeah, um, love the Jazz Kitchen. Going to be awesome. Yeah, yes. super cool place. And then um, if you guys have any Ohio friends or West Virginia or Pennsylvania people, I'm coming to Marietta, Ohio. Oh, um, University of Miami or Miami University, whatever, yeah. Well, no, that's not, that's Miami. No, that's yeah, Miami. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so go the complete opposite. Right. Other east. side of the state. I mean, basically, yep. mile marker one is Marietta. Okay. Where are you playing there? Do you know where you're playing? Yes. It's called the Adelphia Music Hall. Right on. Cool. And uh, what, Are you on any kind of bill there, or is it you? Is it you? It's, it's me. And uh, so this is my college town. Right and on. And so I'm coming back, and one of my Did guitar you, you went students. Did you Miami? Marietta. Marietta. <laughs> Why do I keep saying that? Freaking Miami. Jesus <laughs> Christ. Hey, Clark, <laughs> suck it. Marietta. Clark All right. laughing his ass it's, off. Uh, yeah, back. I've been there because I used to call in a hospital over there. So I've been there, but yeah, I don't yeah. think I've been to the music hall. It's, so you're you're, is, you're doing some traveling. I, that's that's the plan. That's awesome. More I'm sending more all my. I, I got a bunch of friends over there that own pharmacies and they're crazy as shit. So oh, just, let's go. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna all tell right. them. I'll be like, you guys gotta go see this girl because she's gonna s blow your face off. Blow. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I mean, come on. Yeah. I try. Sadie, you can shred a guitar. <laughs> Don't, don't, don't get kid, to see it. Here don't kid yourself. Yeah. I mean, I've seen it happen. <laughs> I'm gonna be playing acoustic, so yeah, there won't I know. be like too so much. So nobody's shredding, face is but... gonna get melted tonight. Yeah, not probably not. <laughs>
Damn it. I'm sorry. What do we show up here for then? I, I don't know. I uh, know, right? I don't know. The this beer? Maybe the beer? Hey, hey. Ding, ding. Is this your first time here? No, I was here for the rib fest. Yeah, but first time inside. Oh, I sat over there and drank a, a good amount. Yeah, I know, but first time playing inside. Oh, playing inside, yes. We're gonna get Correct. you on this. We're gonna get you on this rotation here. There we go. Jerry, okay. Jerry, Connor, and like Leah and their whole family—they're super, super awesome people. All right. She, you know, Cheryl. Have you met Cheryl, the bartender? Me, uh, maybe. I don't know. She. I figure you might know her. She gets. She knows a lot of people. But Rib Fest was fun here, right? It was a good time. Yeah, we're blowing that out. But I hear you're you're booked that day this year. It's September 1st. That's my sister's birthday. Yeah, you can't do that. And man, you guys you know, are twins, right? No. No. What? I thought you were a twin. I'm not a twin. Thank God. <laughs> you got a lot of bad info <laughs> today, Holy right? moly. <laughs> so oh, I got to tell, be before, before we let you fly, I got to tell this story really quick. Uh-oh, what's going on here? Hold on. There we go. We're going to go back. I got to go back to, uh -huh. oh, let's see. Look, look at me frigging popping shit around. There we go. Woo! So I got to tell this story really quick. When I worked for a company, I know I've told you this, Sadie, but this guy that I worked with, name was Stubbs, he comes in. This guy is a music dude. Like It's funny. He looks like Bob Brady, which is the funniest thing ever. Um, comes in. He's like, hey. He's like, you, you ever heard of this band called the Sad Sand Blues Band? I'm like, no, oh, man. Geez. I'm like, dude, like, what are you talking about, Stubbs? He's like, oh, er, you got to check these guys. Brings it in on a thumb drive. You guys. You and your oh, sister okay. and everybody, right? And this is back in 20, 2012, I guess, somewhere around there. It's probably right, 2012-ish. Yeah. Been following since 2012? That's when I first heard you. What? Is that crazy? Yeah, that From is. From a random dude that I worked with. And he was like, these girls are going to be stars. They're, they freaking <laughs> kill it, right? 2012, so, you were like 13. So yeah. yeah. You were, I mean, you were, no, you, you guys were young. Um, I was a sophomore. But they in like high they school. both like their well, their band was awesome. I mean they 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 yeah, so. they were really re they I mean you probably still play. I don't know if your sister still plays or not, but uh, every once in a while, okay. once yeah. once a year for dad's enjoyment. Ah, <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> that's I love cool. that. Good for dad. That's awesome. Yep. So, anyways, so then I just kind of you know, like I left that company and never really thought about it anymore. And then the funniest thing was is I was like, man, I was like, I wonder. if. If she still plays music, so I like <laughs> like you get on everything else, you type it in, and I'm like, well, look at there, she's playing. That's awesome. And then like you were playing a couple of acoustic events in Carmel, um, mm -hmm. at that charcuterie place. Oh you yeah. You played there, and like you were playing, and then I told Sherry, he's like, man, you, we got to go see her at the Carmichael. And look, now you're hanging out on our are. podcast. I love it. <laughs> Oh, that's circle. how this shit goes, man. I love right? It. And yes. you're good friends with Cassidy, my daughter. By the oh, way, yes. she loves you. Oh, like, you two she? are, like, literally, you two are, like, wired the same. I know. That's why we it, don't hang out yeah, enough. You, but <laughs> but maybe if we did, we'd blow up oh, Indiana. Man. I don't know. You, guys would, <laughs> you, would, you would leave it in ruins for sure. But <laughs> Well, anyways, thanks for coming on. But we want to have you come on the podcast, yep. uh, the studio version, anyways. We'd love yeah. to learn more about music therapy and what you do. But um, okay. we are so blessed to have you play at the Rock and Ride for Hope. Yeah, I'm excited. Thank you for coming out tonight and playing and yeah. being a part of this and answering some of our goofy ass questions. But I love it. It's all in the spirit of making people feel more comfortable talking about this stuff, you know? Hey, that's that, absolutely. Yeah. I have a, well, we'll, I have we'll make sure book. to flip the camera around here in a bit. Oh, yeah. And, well, right? yeah. We're, are, we hook, we're, are we going to hook it up? We're going to try to. So we're going to try to stream this. Stream this for a couple songs over okay. there. Yeah. Um, Okay. I'm going to get Mike, and we've got everything, I think. But you're all connected up, right? So you're ready. Good. you're ready to go? You can take a... We need an outline into one of these little packs, and we can wirelessly transmit it to this. So we don't have to Speaking way over our heads. Oh, no, I got this. Oh, I'm you just got trying it. to you think of what I'll, I'm going to give you. What do you got, an XLR or a quarter inch? Yes. Uh, yes. 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 <laughs> it's all that. Look at all this shit. I mean, we got a ton of well, stuff. I'm just here. like thinking. I think, anyway. we, I think we have it figured out, but we okay. had a we had a technology struggle all day. So. Oh man. Well, Clark, why I don't you that. take Sadie over there smoked, and get that figured out? Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, Mike only smoked two packs of cigarettes before this thing. Sadie, That's thanks for coming on, man. Thanks, Sadie. I love you, dude. Yeah. Thank you so much. I'm gonna, gonna grab a beer. Grab a Have beer. Yeah. Gotten throw gotten throw it on Brandon tab, okay? Oh, I will. <laughs> <laughs> don't you worry. You don't have to tell me twice. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. It's what we do here on these happy That's hours. Right. That's right. It's a happy hour. Yeah. That's what it's all about, right? But happy another, hour. another disclaimer we have to throw out there. Yeah. No. 
one of the things that that we had some people ask about. Yep. Because of the places that we meet and the things that we do. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Alcohol good call thing. out. Yeah. Because we do deal with a lot of guys who are recovering alcoholics who are going through, you know, that that struggle and, and, yep. and that that uh, going down that road. You know, we don't we don't promote it. We don't do it, you know, but we just we yeah. meet people. We meet guys where they're comfortable, yeah, uh, whether absolutely. that be at a Harley Davidson dealership, at a bar, at a library. We don't care. Uh, no. We'll meet you anywhere. Um, yeah, I mean, and that, but, that's, I think Clark talked about that earlier, right? I mean, that's yeah. the whole whole thing of us being able to create these environments that are a little less uh, intimidating, so to speak, man. That's right, because it can be. You know? Yeah, that's awesome. So, well, we're going to we're gonna try to get Sadie rocked up here in a minute. I don't know if we want to take a little bit of a break. I can throw on uh, some tunes for people to listen to. Yeah. And then uh, we'll come back to you here in just a little bit. We want to show a little bit of what she can do. So uh, give us a few minutes. We'll come back to you. 